Ethanol is important due to its many uses. So within the syllabus, we have to know how it is manufactured. There are two main ways, hydration of ethene or fermentation of glucose. First of all, hydration of ethene. If you recall from the video in alkenes, we can convert alkenes to alcohol through hydration. So this is the same concept, right, specific to ethanol. If you want ethanol, we will use ethene, right, two carbons. The conditions, phosphoric 5 acid, 300 degrees, 60 atmosphere pressure, right, your phosphoric acid will be the catalyst. So, if you want to draw the structures out to make sense of the balance, the structures here, we have ethene, we have water, the molecule steam, and then under addition reaction, the molecules combine to form one single reaction or one single molecule. Double bonds will break to form single bonds for ethene and then for the, the water molecule one part will be attached to one carbon right, the other part will be attached to the neighboring carbon that has the double bond and then we have our alcohol right, notice that it's not always the, the OH have to be on this end it could be attached here it's still the same carbon. So we have our alcohol functional group or other our alcohol molecule, ethanol. Another way we can obtain ethanol will be through fermentation of glucose. This method is more for alcohols that is used for consumption, right? The drink the alcoholic drinks and all that. So fermentation is where we use organisms to break down carbohydrates to form ethanol and carbon dioxide. The yeast will contain enzymes. Enzymes are basically living catalysts. And then they will break down the sugars to form our products, ethanol and carbon dioxide. The conditions we will need to make sure that there's no oxygen or air involved. It will be at a gentle temperature at 37 degrees Celsius. We will see the reasons for these two later on. And of course, we need yeast as your that contains your enzymes. So this is a setup we can have in the lab. On the left, we have our glucose solution mixed together with your yeast containing enzymes. So what happens is your yeast will break down your glucose. I'll try to write the formula out. Glucose C6H12O6 Then you produce ethanol and carbon dioxide. If you try to balance the equation, you can see that there's carbon in three species and hydrogen only in two species, so it's easier to balance the hydrogen. We have 12 hydrogen, here we have 6. So we multiply your ethanol molecule by 2 make it 12 and then now we balance the carbon on the left side we have six carbons here we have four and one so we multiply this by two to make it a total of six carbons on the right side on the products side and then we check our oxygen to make sure it's balanced six oxygen atoms two plus four 
6. So this is the balance equation for fermentation of your glucose. Right. And we can also include yeast as your catalyst here. So do know how to write out this equation. It might be asked in your examinations. We keep it at 37 degrees. All right, we can't have a too high a temperature because remember that your enzymes are basically leaving catalysts. If it's too high a temperature, they will actually denature, they will die, and then your fermentation will not occur. So during the process, you have your ethanol. They will be left behind in this flask. Your carbon dioxide, as a gas, it will be coming out through this delivery tube into this lime water, and you will see your white precipitate. Right, that's an indication that the fermentation process is occurring. Your products are coming out, your carbon dioxide. Another purpose that the lime water has is it actually provides an air lock. Air lock. You can see that it doesn't allow oxygen or the air to go into the apparatus. Right. There's a stopper here that also prevents air from entering the mixture. So two purposes for the lime water. One is to detect if there's carbon dioxide coming out to show that the reaction is ongoing. Second purpose is to prevent air from entering the apparatus. Why do we need to make sure there's, there's no air nor oxygen? Right. Remember just now in an earlier video, we, we know that ox alcohols can be oxidized when exposed to oxygen. And when they do, they will form ethanoic acid, right, which will cause the mixture to taste sour. We do not want ethanoic acid, we want it ethanol. So that's why we have to make sure that the reaction is not exposed to oxygen. Just like when you see people drinking wine and all that, right, they must make sure that is after drinking, when there's still wine left over, they must make sure the wine is have a proper stopper. If you leave it in open for too long, it will turn sour. Because that's the oxidation of ethanol into the ethanoic acid. What are the uses of ethanol? Right. For the fermentation, once we have the fermented uh, fermented the glucose into ethanol, we can use the ethanol to be mixed with alcoholic drinks. Ethanol can also be used as solvents. It can dissolve many substances, organic substances that are not very soluble in water. So it can be used in paints, varnishes, perfumes, and so on. Right, the perfumes will be a mixture of ethanol plus fragrant molecules and when you apply to your skin, right, the ethanol will evaporate and leave behind the fragrant molecules. As a fuel, right, as mentioned, alcohols, they do combust, they do burn and then they give off quite a lot of energy. So we do use ethanol as a fuel. And ethanol being a liquid, it's easier to transport than fuels such as your gases from your alkanes. So three main uses of ethanol, alcoholic drinks, solvent, and fuels. Right, so that concludes the lesson on alcohols. Next up will be the formula or the family of carboxylic acids.